Thinking about installing a heat pump can be quite a daunting prospect. There's lots of information out there. There's even some misinformation out there. There isn't really anyone that you can ask to help navigate the process. And there's not many people you can ask that have been through the process before. Well, in this video, I've got seven steps that could help you navigate this process. And why am I qualified to help think things through? Well, we had a heat pump installed just over two years ago. And my day job is working to try to decarbonize buildings. So I may have missed something in all this. You may see things slightly differently. If I have missed anything, feel free to comment under here on how you would do things differently. But let's get start started. My, si my seven steps to installing a heat pump. Step number one, understanding what to expect. I think it's really important to understand what's going to happen early on in the process, right at the start of the process. And to get to a heat pump installation, we should be really clear about what is involved. So a heat pump system is made up of several elements. Some of those elements are hosted outside, some of them inside. Outside, we have what we call the heat pump. This is a, a, a box made up of a fan that draws air over a heat exchanger, a bit like a radiator. The heat exchanger then takes heat from the air to heat up a fluid that's in a pipe. That fluid is then compressed uh, using a little bit of electricity to add energy. And that is then exchanged again with a water circuit to supply to the house. And that's kind of how a heat pump works. It's taking heat from the air using a little bit of electricity to compress that heat. And then it's delivering it to a water circuit in a house. So to do that from the unit, you'll have two heating pipes, one going to the house and the other one coming back. There'll also be an electricity supply to power the heat pump and an isolator on that supply in order to switch the system on and off, which you should really never use unless uh, the heat pump's being serviced. Finally, there'll be a little bit of a condensate drain at the bottom of the unit that will flow to a drain nearby. Inside, we'll need to take up some space for a few things. A few things that help facilitate heating with a heat pump. On the heating side of things, this will include an expansion or pressurization vessel and a buffer vessel. On the hot water side, this will include a hot water tank and another expansion vessel. All this does take up some space. We have it all in our utility room. We probably could box this in one day, but we haven't yet. But here it is on show, and I hope that helps summarise what you might expect to install in your house. There are some manufacturers that have allotted this as a packaged unit, and there will be some installations that don't need a buffer vessel at all. But I think this is a fairly standard example of what you might expect from a heat pump installation. What else inside? Well, you may need to upgrade some radiators, particularly any single panel radiators, and this may involve upgrading some pipe work that feeds those radiators. And remember, the bigger the radiators, the better for a heat pump uh, and, and helping it run efficiently. So how do we know what we would need? And that leads me to step number two, assessing what you need. You may be able to skip this part completely, um, but it could be helpful to get a bit of a sense check on what you'd expect from a heat pump installer. So traditionally with our heating systems, we tend to just ask a heating engineer to install a boiler. We don't really care on the size or the type of boiler. We just want something that gives some heat, keeps us warm and also delivers hot water as quickly as possible. And because gas has been so cheap, traditionally, we haven't really cared about the efficiency of that boiler. So we've put in some fairly arbitrarily sized boilers that tend to be much more than we have a much bigger capacity than what we really need. And we've not noticed if they aren't performing as they were supposed to. With heat, with heat pumps, we could do the same, but that could really impact the efficiency of the heat pump significantly. And it could mean that the system doesn't perform as it's designed and doesn't perform as well as it could. So, we need to size the heat pump so that it's providing the right amount of heat on the worst day of the year to deal with our heat loss from our home on that day. 
We could size a heat pump by doing a full heat loss assessment or an estimate of a heat loss assessment by estimating the U values of the walls, the roof, the floor, windows and, the, and doors in a house. We could calculate the area of each part of the house and multiply it by the difference in temperature between inside and outside on the coldest day. So the heat loss of a home in watts is equal to the U value, the insulation value in watts per meter squared per degree, multiplied by the area of the walls or the roof, etc., and multiplied by the difference in temperature between inside and outside. You could also build your home in a software. Um, there's a free uh, software on the website Heatpunk that eventually gives you an estimate of heat loss for your home. Or you could use a rule of thumb, a really quick way of looking at, at checking how big a heat pump could be. Um, someone I've connected with on Twitter who's been on a similar journey to me is a guy called Michael De Podesta. Michael blogs and makes videos about reducing emissions in his life. I love it. He's great. And he goes into a load of detail of all things about his heat pump and how he got there. Why don't you go and have a look at Michael's videos too? But Michael has a really helpful little rule of thumb that uses your existing natural gas use or fossil gas use to estimate a heat pump size. Michael suggests to size, to size a heat pump that you could take your annual gas usage in kilowatt hours, so just what you'd have on your bill, and divide that number by 2,900. That 2,900 number comes from a concept called the heat transfer coefficient, and it combines that concept with a, combines that coefficient with a number of heating degree days that we would expect in the UK. So dig out your bills. If your average fossil gas use was around 12,000 kilowatt hours in a year, then your heat pump size would be around 4.1 kilowatts. Michael says increase this by 10% if you live north of Manchester, because it's cold, it's grim up north. So our three bedroom mid terrace uh, house with, a dub with double glazing and some loft insulation had a heat loss of around five kilowatts when it went through a heat loss assessment. Michael's formula would size this about 4.6 kilowatts. So not too far away. A heat pump installer would do all this for you, but it's helpful to have a bit of a ballpark idea of what you might expect. And if the installer's heat loss assessment is widely different to this, it would be good to get them to show their workings. Why is it so different? So what else would we expect? Well, to run a heat pump most efficient, efficiently, as I said, we tend to assume we need to replace radiators with bigger alternatives. So this is, only, this is really so that a heat pump needs to work less hard to deliver the required warmth to a space. But not every radiator needs to be replaced in many homes. And one way to check which radiators need to be upgraded would be to set what we call the flow temperature on your existing boiler at a level that imitates a heat pump. You're likely to be able to change this flow temperature on the control bits and pieces on the front of your boiler. And if you turned the flow temperature down to, let's say, 45 degrees and ran the boiler for several hours and a room was warm enough on, the, on a cold winter day, that suggests to me that the radiator in that room is big enough. It's, it's sufficient to heat that room even when it's cold outside. And keeping your flow temperature down will mean that your boiler runs more efficiently until you um, get a heat pump. So win-win. So at this stage, we might know what to expect about heat pump insulation. We might have an idea of the radiators that need changing, and we might have an idea of the size of the system that we could need. Next, we need to call on the experts and to find an installer. So step three is finding an installer. And this step has the potential to be a bit of a tricky one. How do we know who is the right person to install? I mean, the good people will tend to be busy and they may also tend to be expensive. If they're good, they might be expensive, but expense doesn't guarantee quality. So to give us a good chance of making a decision for this, we should look to get a few quotes for the work. This could also give us some insight to help us understand how a, an installer is going to install the, the system, how they size a heat pump, how they go about just their general approach, what their priorities are and how they will ensure the system is operating efficiently when they're done. So there are a couple of places to start in terms of finding a, an installer. 
In order to get a grant uh, from the government through the border upgrade scheme, an installer would need to be MCS registered. So the micro generation certification scheme registered with them. So you could use the find an installer tool on their website to find an installer. But you could also look for installers listed on a website like HeatGeek uh, and there find a HeatGeek tool. HeatGeek are an independent uh, set of uh, heat pump um, experts. I mean, they brand themselves as the go-to experts on heat pump installations in the UK. If you're watching this video, there's probably a HeatGeek video alongside one of those sides as well that will probably be telling you a little bit more about heat pumps. And the more I see of their content on YouTube and look at their content on their website, the more I am tempted to trust them. And it appears that their training and their accreditation will mean that systems uh, are installed really well, that they operate efficient and that they operate efficiently. I've interacted with a few heat geeks, um, either on Twitter or YouTube, and I tend to be impressed with what they say. I'm not sure finding a heat geek would give you the cheapest system and the cheapest installer, but I'd be pretty confident that they would do a good job. Not every good installer will be a heat geek and not every installer that's done a heat geek course will do a good job of inst installing a heat pump. But I think it's probably a good place to start. So alongside MCS, alongside heat geek, there are also some of the big players in the energy industry that you may be able to get a quote from. And these are probably likely to do a good job too. And they may be cheaper because of economies of scale. So don't ignore people like British Gas and Octopus Energy. They seem to be offering a comprehensive service um, at a reasonable price for installing heat pumps. So when we've picked a few different people, a, a few different installers, and they are interested in working with you, and remember, there aren't many good installers and they're likely to be busy, then you're ready to start looking at quotes. So step four is the survey and quote. So an installer should come to your house and do a full heat loss assessment of it. And this should include a comprehensive survey of your home, but it will also include some time away from you on the computer. And this time away should then dictate the size of the heat pump, the size of the radiators to each room, to heat each room sufficiently, and the size of any pipework changes that are needed to do so. The survey should also have an assessment of your electrical installation. Is everything ready in terms of the electrical power supplied to the heat pump? Is it ready for a new bit of kit to be installed? And when this, the installer has surveyed and sized everything correctly, they should be able, they should now be ready to specify kit and to quote for an installation. And the quote should give some estimate into how the heat pump would perform. Um, when we think about efficiency, it should give uh, an idea of the flow temperature that radiators are sized to operate on and it should give an idea of the anticipated costs for the installation. And I'd really encourage you to go through this quote in quite a bit of detail. There may be some exclusions that an installer is expecting you to organize, and that could be getting the, the area for the heat pump ready by clearing it properly or getting a concrete plinth built, or it could be providing about providing power to the heat pump. So that might be you arranging an electrician to, to do that. If so, this could add a little bit of effort on your side or you may be able to go back to the installer to get them to organize that for you. And that may add to the cost. So at this stage, it's really good to understand exactly what you're getting. The installer should be responsible for processing the voucher through the boiler upgrade scheme that will get you 5,000 pounds towards the cost of the installation. The installation of a heat pump is likely to be permitted development, but there may be concerns about the, loc the position of the heat pump, whether it's proximity to windows or the position of the heat pump at the front of a house, that could mean that you need planning permission. The installer should be able to help talk you through this and uh, at least give you some advice how to navigate the planning process. But now we're getting there. At this stage, we should know nearly everything that's needed to make a heat pump installation happen. Any electrical upgrade, any radiator replacements, the timescales involved, all that stuff. And if you're then happy with the quote, with the proposed system and the plan for installation, well, there's not much else left to do. Now you can just book the installation. So step five, booking the installation. At this stage, we should be confident on what we're getting. We should be confident on the price of the system 
we should understand who's going to be doing the work and what we would expect as they do it. An installation may take about uh, three to four days. It could, it probably will cause some disruption and you could be without heat and hot water for that the time of that installation. A good installer should be able to manage your expectations and tell you exactly what to expect, setting out a timescale for a complete installation. When you agree the quote and book the installation, they may ask for some deposit. And then that leads us to the final step. Step six, no, not the final step. Step six, the installation. We're now ready to get the work done and you have had it in the diary for a few weeks and you can't actually believe it's happening. The gas supply gets disconnected, the boiler comes out and you've made it. A fossil free heating system is happening. It's likely that there'll be several people involved with a heat pump installation, partly because the kit is heavy to move around, partly because there are several skills required to install a heat pump. It's likely that there'll be a couple of plumbers and at least one electrician. They could take two to three to four days to finish off the work and longer if they have some issues. For us, it took about three days to get things fit. We then went on holiday and they came back after about 10 days to finish off the commissioning. But when they are finished, a good installer will leave the system set up to operate efficiently and to provide all the heating and hot water that you need at home. There may well be teething problems uh, that you work through in the first few weeks of having a heat pump. And there's likely to be a bit of a learning curve in getting used to how a heat pump operates. It can be slightly different, uh, can be a slightly different approach to how we have, we tend to use boilers. Um, even though boilers would be more efficient if we use them more like heat pumps. So the key thing is just is to remember low and slow. Keep the heat pump trickling in heat for as long as possible, rather than blasting in heat for short periods of time, like we're used to with with fossil boilers. And this now leads me to the final step, living with a heat pump. So step seven is getting the most out of your heat pump. Okay, now we've moved to a heat pump, our electricity costs are going to go up significantly, but our gas costs, particularly the gas we use for heating, will go to zero. So with that increase in electricity costs, we should look to make sure the system is operating as efficiently as possible and that our costs are as low as possible. So one way to reduce costs would be to use a time of use tariff. We have a tariff with Octopus Energy that varies the cost of energy every half hour of every day, and we can program the heat pump to avoid the peaks in that cost and use energy when costs are low. Octopus also have a tariff specifically designed for heat pumps called Octopus Cozy. Again, we've been on that, that tariff in the past. And they, have other, uh, and they have other tariffs that could be relevant as well and could help avoid the highest costs for heating. Moving to a time of use tariff could help you find really low cost energy to power your heat pump, or at least to program your hot water generation when costs are low. If you had any cash left after the installation, you could look at solar panels that would help pay to run a heat pump. We can't dig up our own natural gas in our back garden, but we could generate some of the power to run a heat pump from our roof. Or you could look at a subscription through an organization like Ripple Energy. Now we've electrified heat in our homes. We're on a journey to a very low carbon lifestyle. And there starts to be a few ways that we can really push our energy costs down. And that is it. Seven steps to living with a heat pump. You've gone from just a thought that you might want to install a heat pump one day to living in a home heated by one. Great job. What a result. So how does that sound? Does it sound manageable? Does it sound achievable for you? What have I missed? What advice could I have given? What questions do you still have in the, ins the heat pump installation process? Ask below.